Here we have Dr. Michelle Yatsen. Uh, she is the holistic vet of Whole Vet, uh, Holistic Veterinary Medicine. And she is the uh, vet that we take our keys to because they mean the world to us. I have one over here, this little guy. This little guy. He's very calm here. He doesn't seem to really mind being at the vet when he comes here, which is really shows something right there. Little guy! <laughs> and Squeaker is walking around the room. We all know that she doesn't really stay still ever. Making herself at home. Oh, always. At least this time she didn't run out into the rest of the building. But uh, it's feline week. Yay! Yeah. So that's my favorite because of our favorite feline helpers. And looking at her, trying to get her to come over. <sighs> So let's talk about what cats should be eating. Sounds good. Most folks don't know that cats are actually a desert animal. They have all of the eternal organs, oh I said eternal, no, internal okay. organs of a desert animal. That means that they need all of their water needs met through their food. So, oh we have a volunteer here. <laughs> We have here an example of what kitties should not be eating. See, she turns right away. This is dry food. This is totally dehydrated. Oh, we have somebody's curiosity. This is basically junk food for cats. All, all dry food, even if it's good quality, is not very good for cats. It's devoid of water, and water is what they need to get through their food. Cats generally don't have a great sense of thirst, so they generally don't drink water separately from their food. And any cat that's drinking water actually is ill. They're either dehydrated from their food or they're dehydrated from an illness. Instead, cats should be eating a species-appropriate diet. Species-appropriate diet. That's right. And that would be the mice and the squirrels and all other prey that they catch. That is a good diet. That would got a few lips. She's very interested in that. She's a little nervous here, but that got... She's a little nervous. They didn't eat lunch that long ago either. Okay. Yeah. So in any case, this is basically ground meat, which is a very good diet for um, dogs and cats. And it needs to have some supplementation to make it balanced and whole. Let's see if we have another volunteer here. But otherwise, generally speaking, that's what's good for dogs and cats. It's like, I even get food here? This is the best place. <laughs> Where can I go? <gasps> he loves it. So what you're saying is, contrary to what we are led to believe, the best food for your pets, dogs and cats included, is probably raw meat. Well, it certainly is as close to prey as you can get. This little kitty probably sleeps with you guys and mouses around at home and is very sweet and affectionate, but internally, this little kitty is like any wild carnivore. Internally, just like a wild lion. If we can interrupt the meal, let's take a look at those teeth. Sure. Oh, how rude. <laughs> but look at those teeth. That is the same teeth <laughs> and jaws as, as a lion. Right, except small. Right. These claws, they're meant for hunting. They're meant to catch animals and we'll give him some more of this because he's very happy with this. <laughs> we'll reward him for that little demo. That was a rude interruption of a meal. <laughs> but there you have it. That is the carnivore eating exactly what they're meant to eat. It's really interesting. It's not a romantic notion, it's pure science. Everything about their mouth, their jaws, their pH of their saliva, the pH of their, what well, that means the acid and alkaline balance in their stomach, everything is designed to digest this and not to digest that. Right. Which is not to say they can't survive on this. We could sit down and have pizza and soda and we'd do fine for one meal once in a while, but if that was our meal every day... You'd start to feel pretty bad after a while. You would. Well, what about a lot of people 
people say that it's better to feed um, cats and dogs dry food because of their teeth and that it's better for their teeth and it keeps them clean. Good point. Well, that would be a little bit like saying that we can clean our teeth by eating pretzels. I don't think that would work very well. No. <laughs> It doesn't work very well. <laughs> Having a healthy mouth and healthy oral environment is what keeps tartar off the teeth. Hmm. Not scraping with, with dry food. What about uh, salmonella? Well, salmonella is certainly um, uh, not a very common issue, but it can be present in some raw meats. Hmm. There has been research that has proven that you can feed salmonella as part of chicken, for example, chicken meat, to um, dogs. Uh, it has been done with uh, greyhounds at the track. And uh, they'll eat it, and they'll digest it, and they'll do just fine, and you can test the stool, and there's salmonella there. So you know oh. that salmonella's gone in, and it's come out the back door. So it didn't really affect them inside because it just went right through them. No, that's, that's really right. interesting. That's right. So there you have it. That's a pretty satisfied customer. Looks like it. Excellent.